Message from the Senate. Madam Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following House file herewith returned as amended by the Senate in which amendments to concurrence of the House is respectfully requested. House file number 3420, an act relating to drought relief. Message is signed Cal R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. Sundin moves that the House refuse to concur in the Senate amendments to House File Number 3420 that the Speaker appoint a conference committee of five members of the House and that the House requests that a light committee be appointed by the Senate to confer on the disagreeing votes of the two Houses. The member from Carleton, Representative Sundin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That is my motion. This is the drought bill that we're working on. and. Um, very, very anxious to get uh, to work on this uh, with my counterparts and, uh, the, and the Senate and get something across the line sooner rather than later. On the Sundin motion to refuse to concur in the Senate amendments, the member from Pope, Representative Anderson. Madam Speaker, thank you. And again, as we're discussing agriculture today and, and the, uh, the urgency of getting some of these things done, I would uh, suggest that we move to concur with the with the Senate and get this done as quickly as we can. You know, this bill has been around for a long time and the, the livestock producers especially are, are in need of, of the aid that this bill is going to uh, give to them. So I would speak against the motion to, uh, to uh, not concur with the Senate and I would instead encourage folks to uh, move to concur with the, uh, the Senate Resolution 3420, Madam Speaker. Representative Anderson, the motion to refuse to concur is a higher motion, so we'll, uh, you cannot make a motion to concur at this time. I would just make a, a motion to, for a roll call, Madam Speaker. Representative Anderson requests a roll call. Are there 15 hands? Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Discussion on the Sundin motion to refuse to concur in the Senate amendments. The member from Isanti, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, would Representative Sundin yield for a question? He will yield. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Representative Sundin, this is a bill that is pretty important uh, to Minnesota farmers, um, you know, uh, and, and, and it's long overdue. Uh, the Senate has passed this. Can you outline for us why you believe we shouldn't, or what in this bill needs to be changed? Um, before we should adopt it. Um, it's a motion to, to refuse to concur, to send it to conference to work out the differences. Can you outline for us what those differences are, what you think needs to happen? Representative Sundin. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And some of the uh, differences uh, would include uh, how prescriptive the House language is for distributing uh, $10 million out to the uh, drought areas and the people in need the ranchers, the uh, producers in need. And uh, the House uh, breaks it down to uh, $10,000 uh, grants to certain farmers in the highest uh, or most impacted drought area first. And then the second tier, uh, they, they get the attention and down to a randomized uh, distribution. And that uh, allows a, a, like a five-day uh, application uh, period so people that aren't necessarily tech savvy can uh, also participate in this. So that, that is one of the greatest differences. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker and, and members. Um, I, this is really important. It's important to get this out now. If we don't do it now, this is going to sit until after break. And, you know, this is already a couple of months overdue, probably. Um, I think we can trust, it would be the first time I ever said we should trust one of the departments. But let's get this, it's more important to get this money out. It's probably not enough money uh, for these farmers, and, and it's long overdue. But they do need it, and, and I think in this case we can trust the department to, to get that money out. The Senate bill is prescriptive on getting the money to the, the areas that were hardest hit by the drought, um, and, and I would strongly encourage members to, to vote uh, against this, excuse me, to vote against the motion to refuse to concur. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I want. So I'm looking for a, a no vote on this because we want to concur. So a, a, a red vote uh, against this motion to refuse to concur, and then we'll make a motion to concur. We'll pass this uh, and get it, uh, get these help to these, uh, these farmers that need it, and it's long overdue. So let's just do it now. Representative Sundin. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker and uh, Representative Doubt. I do share your uh, uh, feelings of urgency on this bill. I shared those uh, same feelings on the 10th of last month when we passed this off the floor, and this has been sitting on the desk over at the Senate for uh, almost a month now. But uh, they didn't seem too enthused about getting across the line. I'm fully able and willing to work on this with my counterparts and uh, expect to get that done the week after we get back to session. Thank you. Representative Anderson. Thanks, Madam Speaker. Enjoy the, the discussion here, but you know, let's just get it done. Um, you know, farmers kind of look and say, just do it, do the right thing. And um, yeah, this bill has been around a while. In fact, I think the basic bill was put together last summer during the drought and uh, didn't go any place. And now we've got this you know, $9 billion surplus and the bill stayed the same size, except in the House we added more money for replanting trees and such. So, you know, it's $10 million, uh, rather uh, amount that's going to do some good. Wish it would have been larger, but again, let's just, let's just get it done today and get it done here before the Easter recess and get that money out to the farmers. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Polk, Representative Keel. Thank you, Madam Ch Speaker. Um, I, 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 too, urge the members to refuse to concur uh, um, the motion to refuse con to concur. The farmers that needed this funding should have had it last fall. The cattle growers were figuring, trying to figure out where they were going to feed their cattle all winter long. They were searching for food. They didn't have the background, the, the food that they needed. Uh, some just sold their cattle because that was what worked for them. You don't want to starve them. And um, the losses, the, the challenges to get back into uh, uh, growing beef at a time when you let your um, crop, not a right word, your herd down, is, is immense. Just like the turkey growers, it isn't like you flip a switch and go buy cows. You build a herd, you do it by genetics, you make sure that you you can grow a good, efficient, well-bred meat. The same goes for um, uh, hogs. All of those things are very detailed. And this has been waiting way too long. Even as a crop grower, I have already made decisions, and I, I'm taking credit for something my son does, but he has made decisions about his seed was purchased in, in November. If you want all of this stuff on your farm, you are purchasing November, December, you are researching what you're doing, you're looking for what kind of um, fertilizer you might need. You may have done some of that already. You are incurring the cost. So we are a dollar short and a, what is it? I can't even think of the late. And a day late, only we're months late. We need to do this. DNR is part of this issue. I believe it's $13 million that are in that bill for DNR. Folks, they're going to exist. And oh, by the way, some of my trees that looked pretty poor last fall may come back. I'll wait to see if they work. But we're going to pour money into that and replace. Trees are important. I wouldn't argue that. But we've got time. We don't have time with agriculture. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Aitken, Representative Lewick. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, or Madam Speaker. Um, yeah, I echo the thoughts uh, and comments of uh, uh, previous speakers. One of the things that I think those of you who are not, don't have both feet in agriculture, uh, and there's very few of, it, of us uh, that do that are still serving, you need to understand uh, two things. One, very simply, the drought occurred last summer, last fall. The damage has been done. Uh, simply waiting and taking cheap shots at our friends across the the, uh, the building uh, and whining over uh, uh, how long this has taken. Uh, shame on all of us. Shame on all of us, uh, members of the public. Uh, uh, you know. I will apologize to you. Uh, uh, the rest of the members will have to make their own decision uh, for continuing to stonewall on, uh, on this. And oh, it's another few weeks. Here's the things to remember. 
and sometimes you got to have a sense of humor when you work around here. Here's how silly all 134 of us are going to look. Uh, we wait a few more weeks. You know, the weather could change. We we could very well be facing, uh, you know, we get one of these huge four, five, six inch rainfall short period of time. We could be trying to sort out a flood issue while this drought relief proposal, very small one, still is sitting here uh, on our desks because for whatever reason, uh, I guess, uh, you know, we can't act quickly in a reasonable manner. So think about this, folks. You wanna be known as the group uh, that was just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, unable to act in a reasonable and a, and, a, and a responsible manner. And the next thing we know, the good Lord dumps five or six rain, inches of rain on us. And our next emergency, while we've ignored this one, is a flood. Think about that, members. I would urge you to vote no, uh, and let's do the right thing and send this thing to the governor today. Thank you. The member from Traverse, Representative Backer. Yeah, thank you, ma Madam Speaker and members. Representative Keel said it correctly. Um, these things are planned ahead of time. Waiting to afterwards just shows to our farmers that we really don't care about this process. We have the opportunity to act now. This is one of the reasons people get challenged with politics. There's a need and we know the need. This bill is very, it does what it needs to do. And then we're arguing about a comma or a dot. That's how my farmers that I represent look at this. And um, we are not a day late, we're months late. And now we're going to even add more to it. This is what puts, makes us look bad down here because of what it looks like is we're only concerned about what's on the east side of the state instead in the central and the western part of the state. Now is the time, let's move and um, get this move, just like we just did a couple of minutes ago with um, the turkeys, chickens, and um, that scenario with the avian flu. Thank you, members, appreciate your time. Further discussion on the Sundin motion. Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I know it's unconventional to speak a second time on a bill, but uh, I asked Representative Sundin to yield uh, He's the author, I assume, of the House bill um, and asked a question what the difference was and why we would not concur, um, to which he explained a few uh, differences in how the, how the money would go out, but didn't say a word about the fact that there's $13 million in this bill for the DNR. I, I, I can't, I, I'm, guys, we've got farmers who sent livestock to market because they couldn't feed them. Did you hear that? And you're worried about shade trees at the DNR? Seedling replacement, seedling replacement, DNR and tribal lands, five and a half million dollars, 5.55 million. Grants to remove and replace shade trees, 4.5 million dollars. Inflow infiltration grants to, to LGUs and tribes, three million dollars. DNR confirmed well interferences. I don't even know what all these things are, $300,000. There's more money in this bill for the DNR than there is for farmers in your bill. Thankfully, the Senate is sending us over a bill that will actually help farmers, $10 million of relief to farmers. If you want to know why people in greater Minnesota think that Democrats don't support agriculture and don't support farmers, this is why. Think back to this moment if that question ever pops into your mind. If you want to pass, maybe these things for the DNR are really worthy, but I guarantee you they are not an emergency. But I've got farmers sitting within three feet of me who are telling me right now that they believe that farmers in this state have lost their livelihoods and their businesses because banks are saying, no, we're not going to borrow you any money. This is real money that people needed to save their farms. Farmers in this state sent their livestock to market and probably lost money 
because they didn't have the resources to feed them. And when you were asked to step up and help these people, and don't blame the Senate that this bill sat over there for a month. It sat at this desk for a week and a half. This concurrence sat here for a week and a half. I didn't know about this stuff. I genuinely asked, what are the differences in the bill? Not a word about the fact that you've got 60% of your bill is for the DNR. It's not even to help farmers. But every time I've ever heard this bill referred to in the press, it's the drought relief bill. Well, there might be a state agency that's having a drought, that it's an emergency, we gotta help them. Guys, this is the moment where you should reconsider your priorities. We can fund a state agency. We got plenty of time to do that. We're gonna be here for six weeks yet. We got plenty of time to fund the DNR if you want to. But what's happening right now is you are holding hostage money to farmers who are losing their livelihoods because you wanna save shade trees at the DNR. That's what's happening. And I didn't even know about it until I got this document handed to me right now. And if I'm shocked reading it, I can only imagine how farmers who are losing their farms feel about your lack of action and the fact that you're holding their money hostage today because you want money for shade trees at the DNR. I am shocked. Please reconsider your position. You are wrong. This is your opportunity to send $10 million to actually help farmers in this state. Please vote no on this motion to refuse to concur. Let's bring up a motion to concur. Let's pass that and let's pass this bill now before you force another two week delay on these farmers. Any further discussion on the motion to refuse to concur? The clerk will take the roll on the motion. Members, please vote. Will the Chief Clerk please call the names of the members who have not yet voted? Berg. Berg, I. Berg, I. Carlson. Carlson, I. Carlson, I. Gruenhagen. Gruenhagen, no. Gruenhagen, no. Gruenhagen. Haley. Haley, no. Haley, no. Hamilton. Hamilton, no. Hamilton, no. Hassan. Hassan. Houseman. Houseman, I. Houseman, I. Hurtas. Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Mariani. Mariani, I. Mariani, I. Mason. Mason, I. Mason, I. McDonald. McDonald, no. McDonald, no. Noor. Noor, I. Noor, I. O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill. O'Neill, no. no. Pinto. <laughs> Pinto. <laughs> Rasmussen. Rasmussen, no. Rasmussen, no. Thompson. Thompson. Erdahl. Thompson. I. Erdahl. Erdahl, no. Erdahl, no. Hassan. Hassan. Pinto. 
Pinto. The clerk will close the roll. There being 68 ayes and 63 nays, the motion to refuse to concur prevails. <laughs> 